back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Star Wars Episode 9: The Rise of Skywalker is a couple months away, meaning we have until December until our lightsabers get confiscated by the movie theater ushers. But one mystery that The Rise of Skywalker will finally clear up for us is the question of the Knights of Ren, or Knights of Ren. First introduced in Rey's Force Dream in The Force Awakens, the Knights of Ren are Kylo Ren's gang of followers, about whom we learned little more since The Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson left them out of Episode 8. He remarked that the red-clad Praetorian Guard were originally going to be the Knights of Ren, thus why both groups cover their faces in masks and carry a variety of melee weapons, but Johnson intended on killing that group off, and J.J. Abrams had some greater significance to the Knights of Ren left to explore. And we now are finally getting a clearer picture of what that significance is. Join me as I explain everything we know about the Knights of Ren. Spoiler warning in case this explanation is just too much for you. Okay, before Rey saw a flash of the Knights of Ren in her Force dream, the group was mentioned by name by then Supreme Leader Snoke, who credited Kylo Ren as the master of that group. Even you, master of the Knights of Ren, have never faced such a test. They have been described in supporting texts as Force-sensitive practitioners of the dark side, but that they are neither Jedi nor Sith. While they did not appear in The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker did say a line that some consider a nod to their origin when discussing Ben Solo's violent departure from his training. The temple was burning. He had vanished with a handful of my students and slaughtered the rest. That handful of students might have used their powers for evil, like a gang of high school dropouts using their chemistry knowledge to cook meth. But speaking of Crystal, this raises the question, why is Kylo the only member of this group to use a lightsaber with a kyber crystal that we have learned is fractured? We do know from the flashback in The Last Jedi that Jedi students use lightsabers, but the other Knights of Ren use a variety of melee weapons, like vibro axes. Cool. Perhaps as the most advanced of Luke's students, only Kylo possesses the ability to build his own lightsaber, or as the leader this gang, he allows only himself the right to wield a lightsaber. Kind of like in my childhood gang, only I was able to use the slingshot. The other kids had to use arrowheads like a bunch of losers. Just kidding, when I was a kid, the only members of my gang were imaginary. Recently, the book The Ultimate Star Wars New Edition describes the Knights of Ren with this deeper insight. The Knights of Ren are Kylo Ren's most deadly and mysterious servants. With their bodies encased in rusty, battered armor, and their faces permanently concealed beneath ominous masks, echoing that of the new Supreme Leader himself, even their species remains a mystery. What is obvious to anyone who witnesses them in action is that their fighting skills and martial prowess are without equal. Each knight is armed with a lethally effective and unique weapon suited to either long range or close quarter combat. Hmm, that sounded cool. This tells us that we may never see underneath their masks and helmets. They could be a variety of alien species that never get identified. And along with this description, we also saw a set photo of some knights of Ren up close with a caption that described them as masked warriors with specialized weaponry who had an element of chaos to the war between the Resistance and the First Order. Based on that background there, that location appears to be the new desert planet Pasana, home to the Aki Aki tribe who has shown up in trailer footage. But for what the true agenda of the Knights of Ren might be, it could help to look back at some of the Star Wars novels that have helped fill in the historical gaps before, between, and after these events, specifically Chuck Wendig's Fantastic Aftermath series. I listened to Wendig's Aftermath in audiobook form on Audible. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring this episode, by the way. Audible has the world's largest selection of audiobooks and audio entertainment, including Audible Originals, Stories created exclusively for audio, including documentaries, exclusive audiobooks, and scripted shows that you can't hear anywhere else. Oh. Audible offers a convenient Audible app where you can listen on any device while doing anything, cooking, working out, sitting in your car, in your apartment garage, weirding out your neighbors because you cannot move until the Battle of Jakku is over. Audible members can choose one audiobook every month regardless of price, as well as two Audible originals from a fresh selection. And members can keep their library of listens forever and can easily exchange any title at any time. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals for free. That audiobook could be Chuck Wendig's Aftermath. I highly recommend it. Just go to audible.com slash newrockstars. Again, audible.com slash newrockstars, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash N-E-W-R-O-C-K-S-T-A-R-S, or text the word New Rockstars to 500-500. But back to why Aftermath could be so important to the origin of the Knights of Ren. Aftermath introduces a group called the Acolytes of the Beyond. The Acolytes are Sith worshippers who are obsessed with collecting Sith artifacts, including Darth Vader's lightsaber. They were active in the years shortly after the Battle of Endor, 
long before the First Order rose to prominence Circa the Force Awakens. Windig actually has another prelude story coming out about the rise of Kylo Ren that could likely explore the origin of the Knights of Ren, but until that comes out on December 18th, one popular theory is that the Acolytes of the Beyond either inspired the Knights of Ren or literally became that group itself, with Ben Solo perhaps ousting their previous leader to become Kylo Ren and then using that status to gain the attention of Snoke and then later replacing Snoke as Supreme Leader of the First Order. Because this new description of the Knights of Ren singles out their masks, which were made in the image of Kylo Ren's mask, a mask that he modeled on the mask of his grandfather, Darth Vader. Remember, Kylo actually possesses the burnt remains of Vader's mask, implying he could have looted his grandfather's grave, the Jedi funeral pyre on Endor. Similarly, the other Knights of Ren could also have formed their helmets and armor from other scavenged pieces of Darth Vader's damaged armor, which could be why their armor is described as rusty and battered. They could have peeled this off the charred skeleton of Kylo's grandpappy. One of the prominent locations in the Rise of Skywalker appears to be the ruins of the second Death Star, a place where both Rey and Kylo appear. Since that Death Star was destroyed adjacent to Endor in Return of the Jedi, that could establish that setting as Endor, where Vader's remains would be nearby. And this backstory of the Knights of Ren as Jedi dropouts turned grave robbing cult could be revealed. And described as a separate group of warriors who add even more chaos to the war between the Resistance and the First Order, I believe Kylo's old gang could return to challenge their old master for using them as mere stepping stones to higher ambitions and demand he reconnect with the spiritual roots of their cause, a strict devotion to the memory of his rogue grandfather. What do you think is the origin of the Knights of Ren? Comment down below with your thoughts and to help free me from this uh, temporary blue dungeon into a new home to help us go even deeper into Star Wars theory and analysis, please consider becoming a patron of New Rockstar's Digital Studios. Nerds! Patrons can get early access to certain videos and an exclusive monthly breakdown. For details, just check out the link in the description below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVOSS. Thank you for joining me and if my theory is right, which uh, night of Ren, do you think got stuck with Vader's armored cup? You'd be like, hey, uh, Joey Ren, can we just uh, trade off wearing Vader's gauntlet? This uh, this thing just feels wrong. <laughs>